Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. The CW Vox, as you see in the title. What is it? Well, every CW or Morse code operator that I've ever met can speak Morse code. They do so using the words da for the dashes and dit for the dots. Da di da. For example, here's my name. Da di da. Dit. Dit 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 da. Dit dit da dit. Now, when you speak Morse code in that manner, the length of the da and the dit words corresponds to the ratio of length for the dash and the dot in properly sent Morse. And with a normal speaking cadence, you're actually forming fairly decent, proper Morse code. So why not just track the voice and use that to key the radio in CW mode? Um, it should work, and it could possibly be useful for hams that have, uh, for whatever reason, injury, stroke, um, uh, age, arthritis, for whatever reason they have trouble with the paddles and the uh, straight key, and maybe they don't want to type uh, for keyboard CW, or they can't, it might be a good way that they could still send CW just using their voice and speaking it as da's and dits. It should work. So I set about building it. Now originally I went purely with analog electronics, uh, transistors, resistors, capacitors, in multiple stages, uh, but rapidly it got out of hand, it got too complex. You see, the problem is, when you say the word da, your voice tails off at the end. It doesn't abruptly stop. You'd have to consciously cut your voice off, da, you know, and that's unnatural. And I was having trouble with that tail, um, it reaches a sort of a threshold where it would shudder off. And that's no good. That's sloppy and it's bad on your transmitter. So I was having a real difficult time getting that framing down. So I changed uh, my direction and went digital. Um, I went with my old friend, the Arduino Nano, which is a teeny tiny little breakout board for the AT Mega microcontroller. And that greatly reduced the component count. Here's the, the uh, schematic of um, the uh, keyer that I ended up with. And as you can see, there's not a lot of components involved. Now, we'll come back to the schematic towards the end of the video for those of you that want to deep dive into the circuit. Uh, but uh, first, I, I want to show you my prototype. I breadboarded the prototype, as you can see here. And uh, I recorded a video clip of the first time I tested it actually keying the radio. So let's go look at that. Hello. So I've got the prototype done, and I got the software done, and I just hooked it up to the ICOM, which is hooked into my dummy load and on six meters, so I'm not going to interfere with anybody. It is in CW mode, which you can probably see right there. Uh, I'm going to hook up the battery. I have my lavalier mic connected to it, which is a condenser mic like you'd have in a headset. So let's, uh, let's try this puppy out. It'll run on uh, 9 to 18 volts input, so you could run it off a 12 volt supply if you wanted. All right, the Arduino powered up. Here we go. Microphone. Isn't that cool? So yeah, it worked. I was really excited. Uh, so then I uh, spent the next day transferring the breadboarded design over to a PC board, as you can see here, a little perf board. And then I built it into a box. And uh, here it is, the CW box. Now it works really well, but let me show you uh, up close how it works and uh, what the controls are. And uh, we'll explain all that to you. And then I'll show you it in operation. This is my CW box. Now, it has uh, two, in, uh, two connectors, two switches, one LED, and a potentiometer. Over here on the left, this is the microphone input. Now, I use, over at the store, I picked up this cheap little headset, which has a boom mic on it. And the boom mic is a condenser microphone, like most headsets have, 
which is a little electric microphone that has a built-in preamplifier, so it needs power uh, to operate, and the Vox provides uh, 5 volt um, power out of the microphone jack at uh, 0 0.01 or point, no, I'm sorry, 0 0.1 or 0 0.05, something like that, uh, milliamps. So if you plugged a regular mic in there, you're not going to damage it. But that's the power for this uh, little powered microphone in the headset. And you need a headset that has a uh, 3.5 millimeter or eighth inch output right there. Uh, over on this side is another jack, and this is the keying output that would go to your uh, radio's key input. And you can get one of these little uh, 3.5 mil patch cords. So this would go then over to your radio's key input. This is the power switch here, and that turns the unit on. And this LED does two functions. It is the power light, and it comes on at about 45% brightness. And when it is keying the radio, it goes to 100% brightness. So I can, you can see it here if I turn the, turn the uh, sensitivity way up. See it go bright? That's keyed. I'll turn the sensitivity down. My finger's out of the way. So the LED will indicate keying of the radio for you as well. So it does two functions. And then this switch is, uh, is the enable switch. And that's basically in line with the key jack. So you can turn that off uh, to adjust the sensitivity without keying your radio. Or if you're talking to somebody in the room or um, you're going to cough, uh, you know, or for whatever reason you don't want this keying the radio, you can switch that switch off. So I'm going to hook the headset up to it. This one. And... Uh, Put it back here so you can see it. And we'll turn it on. One, one. Okay, I'm going to turn the sensitivity up. One, one. One, two, three. One, two, three. Dit, 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 da. Dit, 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 da. So um, it's too sensitive right now because the microphone is uh, about a foot and a half from my mouth. But you would turn that sensitivity down and you would use the LED. Let me put the headset on my head. There we go. The microphone is just off the side of my mouth. Dit, 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 da, dit, 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 da. That's pretty close, but it's not quite sensitive enough. So I'm going to tweak it a little. Dit, 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 da, dit, 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 da. Not quite there. Dit, 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 da, dit, 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 da, dit, 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 da, da, dit, da, da, dit, dit, dit. Okay. That's sensitive enough. So that's how it works. Uh, pretty simple, huh? So how does it work on the air? Well, uh, last night, it's, uh, it would be Saturday night, um, I was tuning around on 40 meters, and I ran across W1AW-7, a ham call named John, or Jay, I think. I'm sorry, Jay, if it's Jay or John. <laughs> I think it's Jay. Um, my apologies. Anyway, uh, he was doing a Parks on the Air activation for W1AW over in Utah, and so I hooked up the uh, CW Vox, and I made a contact with him. Here we go. Hello, late night CW. W1AW slash 7 is doing a POTA activation. You can see this flickering right here. It's not keying right now, obviously, because I've got the enable switch off. But you'll notice I've got a headset on, got a microphone next to my mouth, and I'm going to try to work W1AW slash 7 on this POTA activation. So I'll stop talking when I turn this on or when I enable it because I wouldn't want to key it. I'm running 5 watts, 40 meters, 7 on 043.
ta 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 so there you go, I just worked W1AW slash 7 uh, with voice CW. Yay! Yeah, I got real excited there at the end. Um, it was really fun. It was cool seeing it work. Uh, this morning, Sunday morning, um, I uh, went online and I discovered that he was doing it again and he was live streaming on YouTube. So I fired up OBS to do a screen capture and I made another contact with him. Now, unfortunately, I didn't check my settings in OBS, and it was still set to 1280 by 720 from a previous uh, job I'd done with it. So I only captured the top oh, two thirds of the screen, but you can hear my keyed CW in the contact, so you can hear how cleanly the CW box is keying the radio. Nice to see you again. You're the one who does the voice to CW key, right? Is that what I'm thinking of? That's I'm looking forward to that video. I think that's you. Oh, there it is. Screen recorded that one. I was voice keen again. Nice. Very nice. I gotta see this, Kevin. So yeah, pretty clean keying. Uh, okay, so uh, let's go ahead and have a closer look at the schematic now for those of you who are interested. But first off, um, as usual, in the video description below, you will find links. There's a link to my blog entry where I write up the project, which has the schematic, and a link to the GitHub repository, repository where you can pull down the software for the Arduino. It's pretty easy to build, not that many components. Anybody should be able to put it together without uh, much issue. Um, and uh, let's see, what else is there? Well, any other relevant links will be there in the, in the video description below. So uh, go there if you want to uh, build your own. And now let's go have a closer look at the uh, schematic for those of you who are interested, and we'll talk about how it works. All right, this is the schematic for the CW Vox. Very simple. So, over here we have a condenser microphone, which, as I mentioned, most headsets have a condenser microphone, and they need power. So, R1 here, uh, this 10K resistor, comes from the 5 volt source, and brings power out to the condenser mic. C1, right here, it blocks that uh, DC power and only passes the audio from the microphone into the amplifier stage, which this Q1 here, this NPN transistor, this is our amplifier. The signal coming from the microphone is very small, uh, 80 millivolts or so, so we need that to a, a much higher swing so the Arduino can sense it. And the output of this amplifier will be uh, swinging somewhere around uh, up to 4 volts max, which gives us plenty of, uh, of range. The Arduino can sense 0 to 5 volts on its analog, uh, on its analog input pins here. So uh, that gives us a range the Arduino can work with. Um, C2, again, this is a DC blocking uh, capacitor. It uh, keeps the DC bias of the transistor from interfering with our sense and only passes the audio. D1 here uh, clamps the negative swings of the audio and leaves us with a purely positive waveform for the Arduino to sense. And then C3 smooths that waveform a little bit. Uh, audio, when it was, if it's uh, clipped off by the diode and coming in, 
is going to look like this. It's going to be a waveform. And every time that it comes down here to this zero point, that would be read as a zero by the uh, nano as no audio. And that would be no good. So with this capacitor here, it charges and then discharges on those. Uh, and what we end up with, if this is the zero line here, is we end up with something that does like that above it, leaving us this range below, right? So that's what C, uh, C3 is doing. So now we have... <coughs> Now we have a pretty steady um, audio uh, DC voltage coming into A7 whenever there's audio. So that's what the software looks for to detect audio. Uh, R5 down here, this is a linear 10K potentiometer. And that is used to adjust the sensitivity. And the way I'm doing that in software is this is, cre this is raising and lowering the threshold that we detect the audio at. So if we go back to looking at, uh, this is zero, Here's our audio coming in. Uh, what R5 is going to do is it's going to set a threshold where anything that's above that threshold is considered positive audio detection. So that's how we set our sensitivity. Uh, let's see. Um, power. Oh, by, by the way, power. The Arduino Nano has a built-in 5-volt regulator. So our incoming voltage, 9 to 16 volts, feeds into the VIN on the Arduino right here. And its internal regulator creates 5 volts, which we can tap for the 5 volt output here. And that's what powers the rest of the circuit here. Uh, all right, so then the rest of the uh, detection and keying is all done inside the Arduino uh, uh, through software. And uh, I've heavily commented the uh, sketch, the Arduino sketch. It's pretty much self-explanatory. But basically, it is watching pin A7 for any input signal that exceeds the signal on A6 and that would be a positive audio detection. And then it uh, keys the radio, turns on D13, which is the keying output. Um, once A7 has a lower signal than A6, so uh, presumably our audio has gone away, it waits an additional 18 nano or microseconds, 18 microseconds. And that is so that if uh, let's go to again here. There's a zero volts. Here's our rippling audio up here. If uh, one of these dips happens to dip below the threshold briefly, uh, we don't want to unkey. And the other the other condition where we don't want to unkey is if, the, if this is the envelope of the audio, we say the word da, and then it tails off. Um, we want there's there's our threshold. We want just a little bit of a delay here before we release so that we don't uh, shuttle, you know, so it doesn't alternate between on and off rapidly. So that framing of the uh, keying envelope is done uh, internally in the software. And as, as I said, it's about an 18 microsecond uh, tail. Uh, with experimentation, that's what I found to be about the best. D10 up here just drives the LED. And the reason it's coming off of uh, one of the pins is so that I can use pulse width modulation to illuminate it at a low brightness when we turn the unit on and then turn it to a full brightness when we're keying. So the LED can do both functions, power light and our keying indicator. All right, and then this is the keying circuit here, which is just a simple transistor switch. So when D13 goes high, that turns on Q2, which then shorts the uh, key line to ground. Uh, so it's just acting like a switch. Now this Simple transistor keying should work fine for most all solid state modern rigs from the last three or four decades. They don't have very much of a requirement on their key jack. If you wanted to key an older uh, radio, like a tube type radio, what you would want to do is uh, you would want, instead of, of this to your key jack, you would want to have a read relay in there, which is uh, uh, did it do do do? Lousy drawing, I know. So you'd have a read relay, which would be that, and then uh, five volts here on the other side of the uh, coil, and then you would use the read relay's contacts to uh, ground and uh, out to the keying jack. You see. So if this was a read relay. Um, that would allow you to isolate this and handle higher, potentially higher current and voltages coming from a tube 
type radio. But for almost all modern solid state rigs, this, this keying is gonna work fine. So that leaves us with just two components. Uh, C4 is an RF bypass capacitor. That's there to bleed off any RF that comes in from the uh, cable from the key jack on the radio so that it doesn't get back into the Arduino and crash it or interfere with its operation. And D2 is just for transient protection. Um, sometimes, it, depending upon how the keying circuit works in the radio, if you're directly keying a relays coil um, in the radio, when that coil releases, it'll send a transient spike back through the uh, uh, keying line. And D2 is there to bleed that transient spike off and protect Q2. So that is the basic operation of this very simple schematic, very simple circuit for the CW Vox. So there you go, the CW Vox. You can dit dial your way to sending CW on your radio if you're otherwise unable to with your hands and a key or paddles. So hopefully that can be useful for uh, somebody out there. I already know of one person that might be able to use it, a friend of mine down here, uh, Dan, VE7HSQ. Uh, has a, a friend of his that he says likes CW, but in an accident lost his right arm and has trouble sending with his left. So he's going to send him the video uh, and thinks it might be a, something useful for him. So eh, there's maybe one use. Um, plus, I think it's kind of neat. You know, it's kind of fun. Uh, I, I was surprised when I was using it to make that contact how natural it felt. It was, it was seamless um, and, and easy for me just to to speak the CW and key the radio, I didn't even really have to think about it. It seemed natural. Speaking is one of the more natural things we do, after all. So I think it's a pretty cool idea, and uh, I'm, I'm really happy that it works as well as it does, and I hope it's useful for somebody else. So there you go, the CW Vox. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.